historic events, technical events, the tectonic plates are moving, okay? And I think that a lot of assumptions that people have had about gold miners moving with the stock market or not with the stock market. The last two years, most people in the sector are just bored or, or scared out of the markets or two, bored to death. I think, oh, it's never going up. Well, sometimes these tectonic plates take a while. And I, I think that they're at a point now where the events will move quickly, far more quickly than, than we've seen in, in years, possibly ever, okay? And I, I'm not trying to you know pound the table in some promotional way or something, but literally I've never seen in my career such macro technical and fundamental events underway that the chief beneficiary of which should be gold and silver and the miners. I think we're at a point now where it's the monetary metals that are gonna enjoy the move. It's a monetary crisis we're facing. It's been building for a long time. Uh, the central banks have created a monstrosity of a bubble in the US mo most especially, more so than anywhere else in the world, not China, not Europe, you look at their stock markets, what happened from 2009, S&P went up seven-fold. NASDAQ went up, NASDAQ 100 went up 16-fold. According to Michael Oliver, there's significant buzz surrounding recent historic and technical events in the gold market. Despite conventional wisdom, which suggests gold miners' movements correlate with stock market trends, recent years have shown a different story. People within the sector are reportedly either bored or fearful with many believing gold prices won't see an increase. However, Oliver suggests that recent market shifts indicate otherwise. He asserts that the pace of these changes is accelerating rapidly, marking an unprecedented turn of events. This isn't just talk for promotion. It's a reflection of what Oliver describes as unprecedented macro-technical and fundamental factors favoring gold, silver, and mining stocks. Oliver further emphasizes the looming monetary crisis, which he believes has been building for quite some time. He points to central banks, particularly in the US, as major contributors to the crisis, with stock markets experiencing extraordinary gains since 2009. According to Oliver, the S&P surged sevenfold, and Nasdaq experienced a staggering 16-fold increase during this period. This highlights the urgency and potential for a significant shift towards precious metals, as reported by Michael Oliver. Looking back at past peaks in the stock market, like in 1929 or during the dot-com boom, it's important to see what happened before things went downhill. The gains leading up to those peaks don't even come close to the huge increases we've seen in recent years, like the seven-fold rise in the S&P over 12 years or the 16-fold jump in Nasdaq. According to Michael Oliver, these big gains were caused by something specific, a massive and long-lasting influx of money into the markets. This influx, he says, is like a huge river flowing into the market for over a decade. This kind of money flow has changed how we think about inflation, Oliver argues. It's not just about prices going up. It's about how much money is out there and where it's going. That flow goes somewhere. You know, in history, we go back and look at various situations where they create a flow and quite often it'll go into the stock market, like in 2009. Well, to some extent that made some sense. The S&P had gone from 1570 into the 600s. Okay, and so they create a river flow and so investors say, I'll put it in here, the risk is, is low now. And they were right, okay? But then look at the late 70s. They created a river flow and it didn't stop gold and silver from exploding, but stocks went nowhere. They were a wasteland until 1982. So there are times when it's the monetary events flow into a an area that people aren't thinking about. Now, there's a lot of asset managers out there of not even gold bug types, big name people, I won't even cite who they are, you know who they are, who've said, hey, listen, you know, don't pay so much attention to the price of your stock, pay attention to the underlying degrading value of your money unit. And a lot of these folks are saying, hey, gold is where to be. We think we're now in the early phase of the resumption of what is, in fact, a bull market that began from 2015 lows. Uh, and if you go back and look at gold over the last 50 years, to give yourself some context, there have been three bull markets. One started in the early 1970s and ran to 1975 when gold was legalized here. Gold went from like $30 to $200, the six, seven-fold move. Then 1976 to 1980, it went from $103 to 850 an eight-fold move. Okay. Then from 1999, it went from about $250 an ounce to 1920 by 2011. A very long bull market, but an eight-fold move. Okay, so three times in 50 years, gold has produced basically a seven or eight-fold move. So, to argue, just simply based on what it's done before, almost routinely, 
We started from a low at 1,046, actually, intraday low back in December of 2015. We have only doubled since then. So you say, whoa, it's a big bull. No, it's, it's minor compared to the three before. And look at the events that are surrounding gold right now. In Michael Oliver's view, recent developments suggest that gold's recent doubling since December 2015 isn't as significant compared to previous bull markets. He highlights significant monetary events putting many institutions at risk, attributing their predicament to false assumptions about the cost of money over the past 12 years. According to Oliver, these errors are now surfacing, leading to doubts about the leadership of the Federal Reserve. He predicts that within the next two to three years, there may be discussions or actions questioning the necessity of a central bank. Even economists who typically support the Fed are starting to question its decisions, suggesting it may have overreached. Oliver believes that this doubt could trigger a sense of uncertainty and reevaluation of the entire financial system, given the historical boom-bust cycles. He argues that once these asset bubbles burst, including municipal bonds, high-yield corporate debt, us stock prices, and the dollar's value. It could lead to significant consequences for the U.S. economy. Where suddenly you don't have any normal investment alternatives to go into. Anyway, we think that the asset class shift into the monetary metals is underway because we think a monetary crisis has been exposed, it was created by the central banks, and once that balloon starts to implode, history shows that every time the Fed realizes at the shortly after a major bull market peak and you start to get downside in stocks and bonds or whatever, they start to shift rates back down again. But if you go back and look at the overlay of Fed funds chart over later in an S&P, for example, you'll see that once those rates start to come back down, it doesn't help the stock market. It's too late. It helps it maybe a year or two later. But during the initial phase of when the Fed says, oh gosh, we were wrong, it doesn't help. That money goes somewhere else. I mean, it's simple. Seven-fold move in the S&P over a dozen years, 16-fold in NASDAQ. Find me a bull market peak that was that bloated during a boom-bust cycle, monetary boom-bust cycle. You can't find one. I mean, even the, the 29 high, I think, was like a triple. I'm, I'm saying that the rush to own a money, traditional money, been around for thousands of years, will be so great if, if you get even a rumor about a big bank. And, you know, we're hearing a lot of stories out there. There's been a lot of feed about some of these big brokers that also have banks. Uh, and some of them are well connected to big banks so that, you know, if they ever had a problem, they'd be bought out by a big bank. So it's really not going to be a problem. But it's still something people weren't thinking about, you know, and, and things they didn't have to think about before. Like, gee, I've got 400000 in the bank account and that's over the 250 limit. I got to move some to another bank. You know, God forbid you got $2 million, then you got to move it to 10 banks, you know. Or maybe you just make a phone call and buy some gold. You know, and I suspect that that's crossed a lot of people's minds when they were having to make this switch to balance their insurance protection in their bank accounts. The thought about gold, something they haven't thought about a long time. And you know, Americans are really lagged on that issue compared to foreigners in terms of the friendliness to gold. And so if the American market ever suddenly wakes up and wants to buy gold, well, gold and silver are pretty small markets and the miners are definitely a small sector. Michael Oliver paints a vivid picture of what could happen if the American market suddenly develops an appetite for gold. In his perspective, the impact would be seismic, resonating far beyond the realm of precious metals. Gold and silver markets, he points out, are relatively diminutive compared to other sectors, and the mining industry is a small player in the grand scheme of things. Yet, if there's an abrupt awakening to the value of these assets and their stellar performance, the repercussions could be profound. What makes this scenario particularly intriguing is its contradiction to prevailing expectations. The Federal Reserve's relentless focus on curbing inflation, narrowly defined within the confines of commodities, seems at odds with the unfolding narrative. Oliver introduces the concept of a commodity explosion, a term he coined in October 2020, which marks a pivotal moment in market dynamics. He illustrates this with the Bloomberg Commodity Index, which had plummeted to the high 50 is despite previous peaks soaring well above 200 during bull markets. The juxtaposition of gold's remarkable surge from $1,000 to $2,000 between late 2015 and 2020 against the backdrop of a still declining Bloomberg Commodity Index is a testament to the market's complexity. Only after gold had already doubled in value did the Bloomberg Index begin its upward trajectory signaling a delayed recognition of underlying shifts. This narrative crafted by Oliver is more than just a commentary on market trends. 
It's a revelation of the intricacies of financial systems and the delicate balance upon which they teeter. The prospect of a sudden embrace of gold by the American market serves as a poignant reminder of the potential for seismic shifts in the global economic landscape.